Just a 22 minute drive north of the Golden Gate Bridge is a popular tourist attraction called Muir Woods National Monument. People come from all over the world to view its coastal redwoods. The only problem? It gets crowded. Very crowded. 1.2 million people a year crowded. However, if you're willing to drive 36 minutes versus 22, there is Samuel P. Taylor State Park. That's just as impressive. Not only will you avoid the crowds, not only will you enjoy picnicking, but you can also camp under the majestic coastal redwoods. So come with us on this video as we explore Samuel P. Taylor State Park. Good morning. Absolutely beautiful here at Samuel P. Taylor Park. These camping spots are just really awesome. Absolutely love it here. that classic kind of feel that you get being here early in the morning. You have people with their fires and people cooking pancakes and that pot of coffee over the open fire kind of feel. It is really, really cool. Get a classic uh, Allegro. It's just really interesting always to see how people like to camp. Here's some quick history for you. The park is named after Samuel P. Taylor, a 22-year-old that came to California in 1849 in search of gold. After striking it rich, he was drawn to this area by the beautiful redwoods and used some of his profit in 1856 to purchase 100 acres in western Marin County. Because of his experience with his father's paper mill, Taylor opened the first paper mill on the west coast. The company grew rapidly due to the demand for paper and the expense of importing it from the East Coast. In 1874, the North Pacific Railroad Company built a narrow gauge railroad running from Sausalito through Taylor's property to serve Point Reyes and Tomales Bay. The route was important to commerce and brought tourists to the area. Seeing an opportunity, Taylor built Camp Taylor Resort along the tracks. He advertised it as a destination for city-weary San Franciscans. The resort offered both a hotel and tent camping, as well as swimming, boating, fishing, and a dance pavilion. Taylor died in 1886, and his family eventually lost the land due to unpaid taxes. However, over the years, the property had expanded to 2,500 acres. The new owner, Elizabeth Rogers, eventually sold the land in 1945, and Samuel P. Taylor Park was opened in 1946. Absolutely gorgeous morning here, and it is just really beautiful. I mean, we couldn't ask for better weather considering a little cold last night. I'd say, what, it probably got down 40, yeah. maybe 42. Definitely not freezing, but definitely below 50, I would say. So you're talking about sites? What was this? Yeah, I think this is a really nice site. I've got some beautiful sites here at Taylor Park. Park your rig here. You got a little fenced area. Here's your picnic table, fireplace. Here's another site next to it. So some are closer to than others and some are uh, nicely spaced. Uh, this one here, you could actually parallel your rig and then uh, use that as the lower portion. And then of course you're in the beautiful redwoods here. Absolutely gorgeous. 
right now because of the uh, winter. This area is closed, but this is another place which is right down here by the river. Again, you could parallel park your RV right here and then go down where Uncle Gordy is. Uncle Gordy is demonstrating how he could ride his bike down there. Wave, Uncle Gordy! And there he goes. Oh, he's trying to get up the hill here. <laughs> oh, good try. But anyway, beautiful campsites here. I remember coming down here as a fifth grader and they had rented all these spaces. I think I broke up a propane lantern. I mean, we're talking the 1970s when propane lanterns first came out. Have some uh, beautiful ferns here. Absolutely gorgeous. There's a Class B motorhome heading out. Look at the cathedral trees, aren't these gorgeous? Wow. All the way up. It's just really amazing and it's so nice that they've preserved all this so you can enjoy it. It's like somebody padded the rail here, didn't they? Just all moss. Beautiful. I don't know if we can get that close of a look, but uh, yeah, isn't that interesting? It looks ferny. It's like a uh, like carpeting. It's like a fern. It it has a fern look to it, doesn't it? Yes. Just gorgeous. Do we see any fish? Nope. Put out the fish finder, honey, and it didn't work. <laughs> If anybody you know does Instagram, I have an Instagram called Chubby Bike Lady. <laughs> you have an Instagram called Chubby Bike Lady? Yes, yes, and I travel all over. So now you were telling us what now? You ride because you have epilepsy? Yeah, because I can not drive. And so they took my driver's license away about nine years ago. I had a traumatic brain injury. Okay. And I started to ride long distances. I always have to have a friend with me because if I have a seizure, they have to be able to track me. So. Yay, GPS. <laughs> so, but again, you have food in here. Yes. And then you have, and, and then you've got the two lights. Yeah. One is, this is strobe, this is not strobe. Uh-huh. And then my computer to track my practice. So show me how you're, you get in and out of your, uh, oh, you just, they just clip, clip in? Yeah. See there, they're in now. Wow. <laughs> have you ever had a problem though, where you had to stop and then you couldn't get out of the you pedals? Learn. And you, you learn. You learn quickly, yeah, I bet. Yeah, because if you don't, you tip over and you fall on yourself. Right. Oh, that's amazing, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, these are nice ones too. And my, my bike was made for me. So. Oh, wow. Yeah, someone made it for me. Fantastic. Yeah. And so where do you ride yeah. here in uh Everywhere in Marin? I can. Oh, okay. uh, this, this is my first time heading to Point Reyes. I've never seen Point Reyes before. Oh, okay. But all over the place. Yeah, nice. Sausalito to Barang. Oh, okay. I live in Alameda, so oh, okay. I came from there today. So today it's 12:30. Well, you're in the heart of the the off-road biking because it but started I'm at tired, so, yes, yeah. true, but yeah. these paths still work really well for that. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, and this old steel frame, someone got it out of the trash for me and it's a uh, Revived it and made it. Really? It well, it looks like a new bike. Oh my yeah, gosh. Yeah. This is this is the headset's new and the tires are new, the brakes are new, but yeah, gear shift is new. Oh my gosh. Well, yeah. have yourself a great ride and it's Thank a wonderful you. talking oh, to you. Nice Thank you so much. You. Okay. Be well. So this is a picnicking area. Now, if they run into a situation where you have campers that come in late at night, they actually will allow this as an overflow area, but you got to clear out before 7 a.m but it's nice that they have the ability to allow that as well. So here is one of their uh, little fireplaces. And at the top, where the uh, smoke actually comes, there's a little chimney here. And it used to have a little thing that used to open and close so you could decide how strong you wanted the fire to go. But these things have been around since the 50s and they're absolutely gorgeous. So we were gonna try to go down by the water but it says creek access is restricted to protect incubating salmon eggs. It's just this time of year, usually in the summertime this is open, then you can go on down the pathway and uh, just a beautiful creek. So this particular tree here is kind of carved out a shelter. You can see long, long ago there was a fire that burnt part of this on the inside, creating this uh, open area. 
but it actually goes pretty far back. You could actually use this as a shelter if you needed to. It's just amazing how this was burnt out in a fire probably hundreds of years ago. All right, well guys, we're going to head on back to the camping area. They reach a maximum height, and I'm not sure what it is. Is it 300 feet? I think that's what these are. And then they just get more round? Well, yeah, get more round because there is a maximum height they reach. Have you ever noticed, like, if you go around... Because they can only soak up so much water up the uh, branches, and then it finally has to stop. Got a family enjoying a picnic here today. Love to see this. I mean, that's what Taylor Park is all about. Just absolutely wonderful. Family fun. Okay, Uncle Gordy is going for it again. Here he goes. Oh, so close. Oh, he's got it. Oh, nice. He has pulled it off. Well, this has just been wonderful. Samuel P. Taylor Park is a very special place and highly recommended. So if you get a chance, come out here. It's, uh, you know, $30 a night, typical state park. Um, and it's just been absolutely wonderful. Thank you so much for spending some time with us today. If you get a chance, please subscribe and give us a thumbs up. Thank you.